Don Allen. <laughs> Don Allen. <laughs> Don Allen. Praise God. Stand to your feet. Stand back up to your feet. Just lift up your hands right now. Just worship him for a second. You got to do it when you're when nobody else is doing it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This will get more done than any sermon. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that's how people act when they have victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Well. I'm going to guess that that few minutes right there has done more than anything they've done on either side of the aisle upstairs ever. For this, amen, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, that right there has set something into this building that nobody else has ever done. I mean, what does the Bible say when we do something like that? God inhabits the praises. I mean, just landed right on the great seal of Missouri right there, right? Praise God. All right, sit down. <laughs> Man, <laughs> well, 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 I don't know how you follow that. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Ephesians 6, 14 through 16, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, what did it say? Above all, what does that mean? That means more importantly, he's saying, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So wait a minute. It wasn't the breastplate of righteousness that stopped the fiery darts. It wasn't, it wasn't having, the, having yourself prepped with the gospel of peace that stopped the fiery darts. Yes, you should do that. What was it that stopped the fiery darts? This is where we've missed it. We've been getting attacked and we're saying, well, I know the word. What's the problem? Why is this happening? I know the Word. I, I know I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I put that on today. That's not what stops the fiery darts. Just because you know that it says you've got to put on, and then you've got to do what else? Above all else, you've got to have your shield of faith. Above all else, he said, have that shield of faith. Friends, I know people that know the word front and back and have an academic faith about the word and, and can talk this book around me in circles and put me to shame. Can quote scriptures and chapter and verse and probably even give you a page number and a reference and have no victory in their lives. I know some folks have been preaching 20 years and I've been doing this for 20 years and have no victory in their lives. They're missing something. They're missing something. That's... That's not the issue. They don't have faith. It's faith. 
It's all about faith. I'm seeing this, and I really had a hard time for a while understanding what was going on with people because those that claim to be followers of God, that I know that they love Him, I know that they know Him, I know they know all about Him, but I see Him floundering, I see Him wavering, I see Him questioning after 20 years of serving Jesus Christ, and you're still saying, but why isn't He doing this for me? Why are we in that spot? You know the Word, but you have no faith. This is the issue. We're letting, we're letting gays and Muslims and everybody bully us around and we're crying about it? Like we don't serve the God most high? Like somehow they're going to win and we're going to lose? What's the problem? Come on! Grab up your shield of faith. The shield of faith. You know the Word. You believe in Jesus. You can read Scripture, but you're not quenching the fiery darts. That's why we're suffering in the body of Christ and getting nailed and getting it handed to us all the time is because you're not quenching the darts. I know your, your salvation is not what's in question. How much Scripture you know is not what's in question. How long you've served Jesus is not what's in question. You have no faith. We're seeing it all the time. 1 Corinthians 16.13 says, Be alert and on guard. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men and be courageous and grow in strength. I like that. Well, I know some of the ladies are saying, I'm not a man. You know what I mean. Stand up and have a backbone once in a while. Amen. Cowering and hiding and having our businesses shut down because we refuse to, to bend the rules in the Bible. Because we refuse to give in to something that our Bible says is a sin. And we're going to get bullied by these people? No, I don't think so. Stand up and be courageous. Stand up and have a backbone. You serve God Almighty. Stand up and be something. Stand firm in the faith. Take up the shield of faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. If you're going to get anything from heaven, you're going to have to do it through faith. It's going to have to come through your faith. Anything you want from God, it's going to come in an exchange of faith. Take up the shield of faith. Act like men. Be strong. Fight the good fight. When did we forget? This is a fight, friends. Fight the good fight of faith. But if you don't have faith, you ain't fighting anyway. We got to fight. fight. Faith is just you believe in God more than anything else. I'm just going to believe the book more than anything else. I know what science says. I know what the doctors are saying. I know what the government is saying. But I'm believing this. Above everything else, that is faith. I'm going to believe the book. I'm so saddened by Christianity today. Here we are, hand-picked by God to be on this earth at this time. You were no mistake. You, you weren't just because a couple folks got together and fell in love. God had us born for this time on earth at this crucial time. Hand-picked you and I to be here in these last days to be strong warriors, but what I'm seeing is, is I'm seeing just like the, the army of Israel when they were faced with the giant, they're hiding behind the rocks and talking a good plan, but not doing one single thing about it. And I am so sick of talk. When's somebody going to shut Goliath's mouth? When's somebody just going to say, shut up, Satan, I'm done with you? Oh, no, we just hide and we say, well, man, if we can form this committee and if we can get enough money and if we can raise this and, and if we can get a million man march and if we can... I don't need a million men. I've got God. Amen. And if I would just have faith in my God, then I can get something done. One man stood strong when everybody else, he stood strong and held up his faith, his shield of faith and said, I'll shut his mouth. Come on. One man... One very unqualified man stood up and said, I'll do it. What's the guy get that does that? Because it's me, and I'm going to do it. And every, against what everybody else said, who are you? Who'd you leave those few sheep with? You just came to see a fight. I don't care what you say. Is there not a cause? My God has spoken, and He is coming against the armies of my God. He didn't get his feelings hurt and said, Oh, Goliath, why are you talking to me like that? Shut up! You're talking about my God. How dare you? Did we forget what this was about? Quit getting your little feelers hurt. 
It ain't about you. It's about Him. And I am sick of people slandering my God. I'm sick of people saying Jesus is this way when I know He's that way. That is a lie. I wouldn't let anybody talk about any of you that way. Not even the nun slapper. Fifteen children were just singled out in a school in Africa and killed because they refused to denounce Christ and you're going to sit here and gripe to me that the chairs are too hard? Shaking in our boots, we can't even get rid of a headache? And they were killed? These are children, by the way, not adults, well-seasoned in the ministry. Young men and women that said, I believe in Jesus Christ. And they were killed for it. Can you imagine the blessing of those martyred children? Man. I dare to say, I won't say. Be strong and act like men. Believe God above all else. Believe God above everything else, no matter what you're going through. God has promised you something, and He will bring you through it. You will get past this. Absolutely, you will. God is able to see you through it, but will you see you through it? Will you ride it out? I don't know if any of you noticed, but it's just not like you won all the time. Sometimes we're going to have to go to war. Sometimes we're going to have to fight a little bit. But he calls it a good fight of faith because a good fight is a fight you win. You've been guaranteed to win every fight that you step into with him. With God on your side, you got God in your corner, you are guaranteed to win every time. He always causes us to triumph. Every time. So I love looking at uh, the Spartans, the natives of Sparta, Greece. I love, I love looking at these guys. They were crazy. They were known for warriors, and the say, they were so much so that, that the saying around Sparta at that time was this, and, and I love this, our men are our walls. They didn't have to build walls around their cities. They didn't have to put up big, big fortresses. Our men are our walls. And if you're going to try to come in here, you're going to be met with some men. You're going to be met with some warriors. Their men were their walls. When can we have that again? <laughs> we need somebody to stand up and form some walls. Amen. Some men and women in the body of Christ. They didn't have to build walls around there to protect anybody. If a threat came, the men were the walls. Fierce people. They were known for fighting. They were fierce. They were fearless. When a male child was born in Sparta, if he was found to have any weakness or any birth defect, they would take that child and put it on a hill outside of the city and leave them there to die. No weakness in their bloodline. Is there any weakness in your bloodline? See, somebody else took a hill and already died for you. Is there any weakness in your bloodline? No. 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 The whole culture was this. If you're not fit to fight, then you're not fit to live. And friends, I see a lot of Christians that ain't living. They're just existing. Because you will not fight. Because we won't fight. And we've allowed this junk to roll over us and here we are now. We're, we're really having to argue. We're really having to argue and have a debate about if I get to say yes or no to a gay and lesbian couple because of my religious beliefs. I have to actually have a, a conversation about that. I can't just say this is how I believe. Friends, if somebody walked into my office tomorrow and said, you're going to marry us at our gay wedding, and I said no, they could take me and sue me and pull my papers right now. Why? How did it get that far? Because we had no law. We had nobody to stand up and say, wrong, we're not doing that. We cowered and we got afraid and we hid behind the rocks and said, we got to come up with a plan. Somebody's got to come up with a plan. You got a plan? We've always had a plan. That shield, my shield, to quench those fiery darts. At age seven, every male child was sent off to military school for the next 13 years of their life. These Spartan children they would be trained in warfare for the next 13 years of their life. Taught to be tough, endure pain and hardship. And it would be taught to honor and fight and to survive. And at the age of seven, for 13 years, 13 years, they would train until they made it to manhood. And after 13 years, at the age of 20, you became a soldier. And a soldier would spend all of his time with fellow soldiers. Eat with them. Hang out with them fellowship with him. You weren't allowed to go hang out with the others. You were set apart now. You were a soldier. You were somebody else. 
They ate together, traveled together, and at 20 years old, they took this oath, of, uh, uh, this oath of loyalty that said this, I will not disgrace my sacred weapons, nor will I desert my comrades by my side. Wherever I stand in rank, I shall stand and fight till death for sacred things. Wherever I stand in rank, you ain't too good to fight. You're never going to get big enough in the ranks in Christianity to not fight. I think Paul had it figured out when he, when he was somebody in the ministry and he said, I'm the chief of all sinners. That's what I've gotten. He understood. You're never going to make it too high to where you don't have to fight. You're always going to have to fight. On the day of their first battle, right before they went into their very first battle, even after all the training that they had, I mean, these guys already knew. They knew everything to do. Academically, they had learned it. They had battled each other. They knew what to do. They, they had it down. They, they'd done nothing but train and learn and study and how to use the weapons for 13 years. 13 years you've sat in church and heard the Word of God and know the Word of God and know exactly what to do. You studied the book and taught great warfare. After they trained for 13 years, the day that they would go to battle, their mother would come to them Listen to this. The day before they would go to battle, their mother would walk up to them after all this time and present them with a shield. They had it all figured out, all the training and warfare, and that's the day, the day they would go into their very first battle, their mother would show up with a shield. And, and, and know, knowing that he was about to go into battle, she would speak to her son and she would say this to him. Either bring this shield back or you be brought back on the shield. You either bring this shield back or you will be brought back on the shield. That's serious business from your mother. This is from your mother. <laughs> Come on now, this is your mother. Sometimes the father's shield would be given to the son. Maybe the father had fallen in battle and they took his shield and now the mother is giving this to her son. Your daddy died defending this shield. He was carried back on this shield. You now take up the shield of your forefathers and you go forward and you honor the shield and you defend the shield and everything that your daddy fought for, you stand in that battle and you hold that shield up or you'll come home on it. Amen. It ain't no good having dead warriors. I'm sick of seeing dead warriors. I don't need any dead warriors. There's no honor in it. I need you on the battlefield. We need a wall. We need a wall. Come on. Above all else, the shield. I mean, this is a mother. We don't raise fighters anymore. We don't raise warriors anymore. We don't raise champions for the Lord anymore. Don't you dare let that shield go, she said. Don't you dare let it go. I don't care however many arrows are coming at you, you hold up that shield of faith and you continue to fight. And when you get home, you break those arrows off and you say, devil, you just came at me with every single thing that you got and I'm still going to stand here and believe my God above you all day long. You couldn't take me out. You couldn't get me to change. I got a shield. You break them things off and you get back to work. You are never, doesn't matter how hot, how tough, you don't ever throw down the shield of faith. You don't ever lay down and say, you know what, I'm done. I ain't fighting anymore, I'm done. I'm leaving, I didn't sign up for this, I'm out of here. It don't matter if you signed up for it or not, you're in it. You're in. You come home from that battle and you break those things off, devil, you, you got nothing. You got nothing on me, I'm still here. If the devil could have taken you out, friends, you'd be out. If God wanted you out, you'd be out. He doesn't want you out and the devil can't take you out. We're going to have to fight. We're going to have to stand and believe that we can still win this state for Jesus' sake. I'm going to hold up my shield. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop believing that. We're standing in here. That's proof enough to me. I've heard the word of the Lord and I know He wants every single person born again in the state of Missouri. I know He does. I know He does. Oh, we'll work on the rest, but we're going to work on Missouri right now. Amen? Come on, we've got a greater one. Amen? If you're not holding up that, that shield of faith, then you're going to be carried back on it. It's wartime. It's not sandcastle building time anymore, friends. It's not playtime anymore. It's time to overthrow kingdoms and attack and begin to move forward. The church has been rocking on her heels for too long. It's time to go forward. You can't be caught getting pushed back. I can remember when we used to play football, we were on a state championship team 
two years undefeated, went to state, won two years in a row. And I remember when you were on that line, if you backed up, you found a foot in your backside. Amen. Don't you back up on offense. You're going that way. And if you backed up, you got replaced instantly. Next. There ain't no backing up on this field, friends. We've got to move forward. That's how you win the game. You don't, you don't win it backing up. There is no backing up anymore. Carry your father's shield. You can't blame the general anymore. You can't blame the general anymore. It's you. It's me. Honor the shield. Carry your father's shield. I'm sick of coward Christians. We need to pick up our shield and do just what it said. Act like a man. Stand up. Be strong. Be courageous. When the battle rages and the blood is flying and, and other people are running in terror, you're going to be a hero if you'll just stand and come home and bring that shield home. There's no honor in being carried on the shield, but there's great honor in you coming home with the shield. We need to bring honor back to our Father. Amen? Are you bringing the shield home? Because if not, there's going to be a day you'll be carried on it. We've seen it. We've seen it, friends. We've seen those that carried a shield who put it down. They put it down. They laid it down. And it wasn't too long they were carried home on it. And that does not do this kingdom any good. Not at all. Everyone getting upset with the general. Well, why did God let this one die? Pick up your shield. I've never seen, even in our military today, when the enemy starts shooting at him, that they stand up and say, well, why are you doing that? What did I ever do to you? Because that's what we do as Christians. Devil, why did I do that? Fight! Stand up and fight! He is going to whip your tail if you don't do something. You can't stand there and ask any questions anymore. You can't stand there and wonder why. I'll tell you why. He hates you. Satan hates you and wants to kill you. He's not toying with you. He wants you dead. So when the, when the fiery darts and the arrows start flying, you better hold something up and begin to block them. You can't stand there and whine about it anymore. You can't stand and ask the general, why are you letting this happen? It's happening. Fight. Fight. I can't imagine. I can't imagine with the arrows flying, swords clanging, the heat of battle, and you're on a bloody battlefield, and you're down there with your buddy, and you're fighting, and you look over, and you're like, you're wearing that? <laughs> wait, wait, did you hear what so-and-so said about in the middle? I can't imagine in the middle of a battle and, and fighting and, and all of a sudden you look over and you're like, are those tattoos? Why are you girls still wearing those things on your heads? Well, I didn't really like the music today at the beginning of the battle, did you? Oh, they were really off. Man, did you hear what the general said? I don't even believe in half the stuff the general said. In the middle of battle, I can't imagine. I can't imagine all that kind of talk in the middle of a battle, and yet that's what I hear today. That's what I hear today. Yeah, but so-and-so, and, -so and he and he's said, and, and they sat in my seat. Don't they know that's where I sit every week? Well, they do. I can't imagine somebody laying there and your comrade is bloody and hurt and you walking over and saying, man, I'm going to help you out, but did you tithe? Did you tithe this week? Did you give into the next building project? Well, I'm out of here then. Well, you don't believe exactly like I do? Well, well, I can't even imagine. I'm throwing the shield down. I'm done. Maintain the shield. You honor the shield. Amen? You don't leave it on the battlefield. You, you, you got to keep it close to you. And the more intense the battle, the closer you got to keep that shield. The more you keep that shield tied up against you, the harder it gets. You're going to be in battle whether you want to be or not. The battle is not waiting for your approval. It's not waiting to be on your time schedule. It's here and it's time for strong, courageous believers. Strong, courageous believers. And I'm telling you, when that time comes, and it will, when the enemy starts to blacken out the sun with the amount of arrows that he's firing at you, and you can't even see daylight anymore, that'll happen to you. You better hold that shield up and you better fight in the shade, amen? You better hold that thing up and you better fight right in the shade of that shield. You better pull in really close you better fight under the shadow of the Almighty. 
I'll say He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God, and in Him do I trust. I'm going to pull under that shadow of the Almighty. That means you got to get close. you got to get close. I think we need some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's in the body again. We need some folks like these guys in the body. Throw me in the fire or not, I will stand. I'm not going to back up. I'm not going to bow down. I'll, I'll praise Him in there. I'll praise Him out here. It don't matter what's going on. I will trust my God above all else. Amen. Here we're wanting, why are you throwing me in the fire? God, why are you letting this happen to me? They weren't alone. They didn't get a miracle outside of the fire. They got it in it. We're so worried about standing out here wondering why we're not getting a miracle. I don't see too many of them that got them until they were in a situation where they needed them. You're just sitting back saying, oh, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. You got all you need right now. How about you go do something and get yourself in a spot where you might need something else? You're sitting back, we're all fat and fed and ready to roll. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, tomorrow, when that battle, you know, maybe tomorrow and, or maybe the next day. I don't know. But I'm ready. It's coming. <laughs> we already talked. It's coming. It's coming. It's here. Don't turn away from the faith. Jesus knew this above all else. Satan came to him three times. And how did Jesus answer? He held up a shield and he said, it is written. He just put a shield between him and the enemy and he said, it is written. I will believe my God above anything that you try to offer me, Satan. I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. Nope. You get behind me. You get behind me. And he held up a shield. And he kept holding it up. Above everything that he was being told. He didn't just know about the words. He lived them. Being offered the kingdoms of the world. Some have allowed the spoils to distract them. Some have. The gold and the goods and the treasures. And Listen, don't set your shield down so you can carry more stuff. And you don't use the shield to carry more stuff on it either. That's not what the shield is for. And I've seen many a people abuse the shield saying, here, help me load this baby up so we can get somewhere. You don't do that. I'm going to tell you right now, there's something more important than a new car and a big house and the largest church, and it's the shield of faith. Because I'm going to tell you something, that money isn't going to help you when the enemy's attacking you. That money ain't going to help you. That big old building isn't going to stop cancer. Right? That car can't go fast enough. This past year, I got to drive the yellow jacket. Who remembers the yellow jacket? Yeah, you do. The yellow jacket. I got to drive the yellow jacket down to one of our tent revivals where we met up with the powers of darkness, did we not? Here's Angelique, the high witch of the four corners, and I'm driving this yellow jacket, this beastly hot rod machine yellow jacket. And so we meet, we meet Angelique, and we get her born again, and her family's mad at us, and they're sending curses to us in the middle of our tent revival, and it started with an earthquake. The very night that she was born again, we had an earthquake. And then the next day, what happened? A tornado. A tornado happened. And I jumped into that yellow jacket with 392 cubic inches sitting right there. Zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. 182 mile an hour top speed and I couldn't get away from a tornado. Do you hear what I'm saying? That stuff won't get you there. But when somebody dares to stand up with a shield like TJ and begin to speak to that tornado and said, get out of here, then it had to go. Amen. The stuff didn't matter at that time. The yellow jacket didn't matter at that time. I love the yellow jacket. But it didn't do anything for me. That's a borrowed vehicle, by the way, but it will be mine. And we can try to outrun tornadoes later, maybe. The spoils of war are not the sign of greatness. I'm sick of $65 million jets, stupid crazy homes, and $1,000 shoes. Well, they deserve it. They can, sure, they can have all of that. But let me tell you something. Not at the expense of laying down a shield, and not at the expense of causing others to lay down theirs. No. Sorry. No. Nope. Honor the shield. The spoils are not a sign of greatness. I'm so sick of hearing that. Well, they must be doing really good. Look at what they've got. I don't give one rats what you got. Is that getting anybody born again? Is it getting anybody healed? 
Those are the questions I'm asking. Maybe they are. But I don't know. They're not a sign of greatness. This generation has really missed it. The forefathers of our faith carried a shield. They passed along values to us. Things that really mattered. The values of a shield and honor. And somewhere we got caught up into thinking that the shield wasn't so important anymore. Or maybe my shield can make me money. Or my shield's bigger than your shield. Or maybe I'll hide behind my shield and when you come to question me, do not touch God's anointed! Shut up and sit down. You don't know what I know. <laughs> Abusing the shield. There's some people that paid way too big of a price for you to have a shield. There's people that, that paid way too big of a, a price for you to have the right to bounce around from church to church for you to dishonor the shield like that. Touch not thine anointed. Don't you question me. My shield's prettier than yours. Costs more than yours. Will it stop an arrow? That's all I want to know. Will it stop an arrow? And are you using it? Are you using it? I don't think anybody got ready to rain down arrows and said, that's pretty. I don't think I'll shoot at that one. All the more you could be the target, possibly. I don't know. But listen, if you've got to choose between things in your, in your faith, if you've got to choose between your friends and faith, if you've got to choose between your family and faith, I'm sorry, you're out, and faith is in every time. I'm sorry. I love you, but God bless you. I got to stick with my God. I got to stick with my God. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to let you down, and you are going to let me down, but He is not going to let us down. Amen? He's just not going to. He's not going to. Amen? And I will maintain and honor that shield. Act like men. What a word. Act like men. I mean, we know. We know what that means. I know there's ladies in here, but we know, we know that means, come on, you got to toughen up a little bit. You got to stand up a little bit. Amen? I mean, when I, when I kept thinking of act like men, you know, and I kept looking, I kept thinking of you all and, and how so cute and, and just so put together and so innocent how they look, and yet they were right there with us, right there with us when we're standing there with the high witch of the four corners and not one single one of them were afraid of her. They stood right in there with us and ministered to her. Every time that we were around her, they were around her. She kept asking me, why do these guys not... Fear me. Why are they not afraid of me? Because the second she walked in, they ran up and gave her a big old hug, and she's like, why are they not afraid of me? They've got a shield. They've got a shield. There's no fear in them. They've got a shield. What do they have to fear? If God be for them, what could be against them? Who could be against them? Certainly nothing Angelique could conjure up. Amen? Stand, and having done all to stand, you stand. Amen? I hope you know me well enough now that it's nothing personal, but I am not going to run around with milk toast baby crying Christians anymore. I'm just not going to do it. I can't do it. It's going to get me killed and it's going to get them killed. We can't do that anymore. Someone talked to me. Uh, nobody talked to me. I'm leaving. They sat in my seat. Uh, give me some Spartans that are born to fight again. So-and-so didn't shake my hand. So-and-so looked at me funny. I don't care. You look funny. Stand and fight. Too many people are dying out there for us to be taking times, time out now to powder hind ends and tuck you into bed anymore. You know the Word. You serve the Almighty God of everything. What is the problem? How many more Scriptures do you need before you can go do something? The devil needs no more to attack you right now. He needs to know no more information about you to come in full-blown and attack you right now. And we're sitting back saying, well, what, now wait, I'm not ready. Wait! Wait! He's not waiting. He's not waiting on you. Lives are at stake. When the enemy attacks, I already know no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. It might rain down arrows for days, but it isn't going to get me because I've got a shield. I'm going to hold up my shield. It's coming. I'm not saying that I'm not scared about it, but I'm going to do it scared anyway. If I have to, I'll do it nervous anyway. Because I trust this book above all else. I know we get nervous about it. You do it anyway. I always win. I always triumph. I got a shield. Keep in honor that shield. 
If you're going to try to talk with folks and tell them about Jesus, you've got to honor the shield. You're going to try to preach, you've got to honor the shield of faith. You have to. Honor the price that the generations before had to pay so that you could stand there. Honor the shield. Honor those that went before us so that we could preach in a place like this. Somebody else prayed us in here, friends. It wasn't us. Somebody else stood up years ago and said, it'll happen in Missouri. Oh, that'll never happen. Yes, it will. Don't you shoot that at me. Yes, it will. And when I stand up here and tell you that Missouri shall be saved, that's exactly what I mean. Because I'm going to hold up a shield and I don't care what any other fiery dart says about it. I'm telling you Missouri will be saved. And if you don't want saved, get out of Missouri. Because this state will be known for something else. Come on, it's time for somebody to stand up in a land and just say, this is going to be that place. This can be Goshen. This can be that place of refuge. This can be that place. I don't know about the rest of the country, but we're going to stand here and we're going to protect our border with the wall. With the wall. With men and women that will stand, hold the Word of God up and say, go ahead and cross that line. Go ahead. One or two things are going to happen. You're going to die or get saved. <laughs> One or two, uh, whatever. It's your choice. Do you know Jesus? You're about to meet Him. And it won't be me. It's going to be, if you're going to come into Missouri, you better be ready for something. Come on. But what are we saying? Oh, ain't nothing happening. This place is terrible. It's going to hell in a handbasket. I don't know what's going on. And that's exactly what we're having. It's time to stand up and say, not in Missouri. Not in, not in our town. Not in our church. Not in our meetings. Everybody's healed in our meetings. I mean, did we not just see some awesome things this weekend? Prayed for about 200 people at this man's church in two days when we were in Sykeston. Saw marvelous things. Testimony still coming in. Sykeston, where's that? Who cares? The Holy Ghost knew. And when somebody walks up to me standing in line that says, I just drove three and a half hours because I knew if I got here, I would be healed. That's a shield that I'm looking for. Drove to Sykeston. Their faith made them whole. They had an expectation to come and be healed, and they were. Their faith made them whole. They crucified Peter upside down. And you want to tell me you're upset because nobody shook your hand? Wow. The pastor didn't remember your name? Honor, honor the shield, man. Honor the shield. People being burned alive because they won't denounce Christ? And you want to go and act like you fit in at work and don't ruffle feathers? And there's people being locked up in cages, burned alive for Jesus? And you're just going to fit in? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, Donnie, you don't know how it is. I get chewed out weekly. I have a television program that airs to 37 million people. I get chewed out weekly. I have a radio program. I get chewed out weekly. I have a wife and kids. <laughs> Just kidding. Look at my mom. My mom's like, oh, woo. People always coming at us, you should do this and do that, and, and we don't want to be a part of this ministry. Bye. See you later. It's battle time. I don't have time to argue the Scriptures with you because they were never to be argued. They were to be believed. Believed. I don't really know if that's a shield or not. It's a shield. There's nothing to argue about. Come on. People crying about God not healing them. I'm sick of it. It's you. It's not Him. It's you, it's not me, and it's you, it's not them. <laughs> it's you. Why am I not being healed? You. It's never his fault. And guess what? It ain't my fault either. It's us. Where is your faith? We just saw miracle after miracle after miracle of folks that I don't even know may never see again because they had the shield and said, I'm done. I'm fighting. And they stayed. Our service went from, I mean, you think you're here long? We went from, what was it, 6 o'clock to 9.45. And people stayed because I am done with this sickness and disease. And the first guy to get healed was a man that walked up to me before the service started. And he said, well, I'm just going to tell you what, big, tall, lanky fella. Farmer. Is that right, farmer? 
came up to me and said, well, I'll just tell you what. He said, I got out of bed today and I just decided, you know what, if anybody's going to be healed at these meetings, it's going to be me. About 10 minutes into the first sermon that I began to preach, I stopped and I said, sir, you got to come down here right now. I perceive that you have faith to be healed. Boom, done right there on the scene. That's how you start a meeting anyway, amen. Why? Because he held up a shield and he said, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. No more. I will believe God above every pain in my body. I believe Him. I believe Him. Don't lay down your shield. If you do, you will suffer the consequences of the fiery darts of the wicked one. Don't care how many scriptures you know. Do you just believe one of them? Could you just believe one of them and hold up a shield and just say, no more. No more. Don't care where you've been or what you've done. The Bible says in Colossians 2, 13 and 14, when you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He made you alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. And He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. You had a certificate with everything on it, a death certificate that said every single thing that you've ever done, every time you sinned, every single time that you blew it, every single time that, that you fell short of the glory of God, it was all on a certificate. And it says that Jesus took it and He didn't just nail Jesus to a cross, they took it and He nailed that certificate to the cross. And then Jesus climbed up there and bled all over it so you couldn't read it anymore. That certificate that it's gone. There is no more excuse for you now. It's over. You would have to go and wash the blood off of it to find out what you've done. And that ain't going to happen. Not going to happen. The Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says, here we see that Jesus nailed the certificate of, to that cross and he said, I'm no longer a slave to sin. This is a guy that was killing Christians. I'm no longer a slave to sin anymore. Jesus took that. He nailed that. If anybody had a right to be upset about what they'd done, it'd be Him. Whatever it is you've done in here, have you killed any Christians lately? No. He did. In the name of God, above all things, by the way. Well, God told me to kill these people. Wow. But I love this. I love this. I'm no longer a slave to sin, but I choose to become a bond servant. Notice what he says. I choose to put the chains back on, but these chains this time are to chain me to Jesus. Yes, sir. These chains now are going to chain me to His heart, to His will now. Even though I'm free, I chained myself. I'll no longer be chained to the freedom of this world, but I'm going to be chained to the freedom of Christ. There's a difference in being saved and being a bond servant. Saved, He's your Savior. But chained as a bond servant makes you makes him your master, makes him your master. He's Lord. Some are saved, but but they're not bond servants. When when you're saved, you got a Bible. When you're a bond servant, you got a love letter, and you can't wait to read what it says. You can't wait to get into this thing and find out what he says to you every day. That's a difference. When you're saved, you might go to church, but when you're chained, you're in love with the head of the church, Jesus Christ. The Ten Commandments are a duty, but when you're chained, they're a delight. Nailed our sin to the cross. You're born again. You know, born again is more than just breathing. You know, being born in the natural was more than just being born and started taking a breath. There was may, way more to your, to your life than that. And here we are, born in, in the, in the spirit realm, born into a family that if you don't fight, you're going to die. That's the family you're in now. That's the times that we live in now. This is where we're at on the earth today. It's time for warriors to arise and pick up a shield. Joel 3, 9 and 10. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare war. Stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of the war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong, a warrior. It's time. We've lost something. You know, we've lost some folks coming back to this place. And that's just fine. That's fine. We lost a whole bunch of folks coming back here to the capital. 
Why? I have no idea, but you know what? It's okay. Because it's not about, this, it's not about the meetings. It's not about how many shows up. It's about how many that show up are going to do something. If I could find five people that would do something, it'll be the packed out room. If we could just find some folks that are going to do something, some, some warriors. I mean, I would show up here even if you didn't because it's not about this ministry. Oh, what's Don Allen doing? It's not about Don Allen. It's about the state of Missouri and what God said for us to do. We have to be here. We have to. He said so. We talked about it. I mean, a bore witness immediately. We knew we had to be about, we had to come back here. Had to. We've got to do what he tells us to do. I'm going to hold my shield high. My God will save by the many, or he'll save by the few, but he's going to save. He's going to save. And I'm not fighting for me anymore. I'm fighting for them. I'm in. I got my ticket to heaven. My family's doing just fine and they're going to make it. I'm fighting for them. For my state. For my nation. For this world. I'm fighting for them. I do not want one more person to slip into hell. The reality is they will. But I hate that. I can't stand that. I, I can't stand to think of it. If you're suffering, you haven't received from God what it is you're believing for, I promise you, if you, st if you set down your shield now, you'll definitely never get it. Matter of fact, it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse. Don't we see that with people? They start out believing, but then why isn't God healing me? I don't know if He even wants to heal me. I'm not sure I was even healed ever anyway. Well, gosh, look at me. Now I'm sick. You think? You just opened yourself wide open for the fiery darts to come in. You've got to stand. I guarantee you they were tired. I guarantee you some days were better than others, but they came home alive because they would stand with a shield. I can believe that tomorrow can be better, but I can't do it if I'm dead. And you can't either. We're going to have to stand. Not everyone in the Bible fought, but some had to. Some were called to fight. Some were called to be on the front lines, and that's what this is in this place. Called to be on the front lines. We are the wall for Missouri. We're the wall. It has to start somewhere. We are what stands against ISIS coming here and killing your children. God says, if I could just find me ten, I won't destroy the place. Somebody's going to have to stand or they're going to be here. Why do you think nothing significant has happened here yet? We had 9-11. That was bad. But that ain't nothing compared to what's going on in the rest of this world. In the rest of the world, we would be dead right now standing in this room. They would walk in here and kill you and I right now and nothing anybody can do about it. But there's some folks that are standing with the shield as that wall saying, you ain't getting through. Those Spartans would line up shield to shield tight. You ain't coming in here. You're not coming in here. And when the, when the arrows started flying, they held it up and it protected them and everybody behind them was protected. We've got to continue to stand. You can't leave a hole in the wall. They'll find a way in. We've got to stand. You don't have a choice. We have to stand. Somebody that will honor the shield of faith formed and fashioned out of the fire of God's Word. This book has stood the test of time. There ain't no reason for you not to believe every word of this book. It has made it through way more than anything you can ever doubt about it. Greater men and women have come and doubted the book better than you. And it's still here. Greater scholars have come and tried to rip it apart and prove it to be wrong only to find it proving itself time and time again to be more true every time they try to tear it apart. Every time they try to disprove it, God allows them to find just one more artifact that proves it was true. Have you noticed that? Every time somebody tries to rise up and say, that can't be true, then they find something at the bottom of the Red Sea, horses and chariots and, and all this stuff, and they say, well, gosh, I don't know. They find another bone, another toothpick from the cross of Jesus or something. I don't know. But they're always finding something every time that somebody rises up and says, it isn't true, and then suddenly what happens? It proves itself out again. Another piece of history arises. Another testimony comes from, from 100 years ago, 300 years ago, where the book was true. Every time this book has stood the test of time, this is your shield. Proven. It's been through the fire. It'll never fail you unless you just 
put it down. Then you got nothing. We've got to hold on to the shield. You have to have faith in the words of this book above everything else. Anything else you're seeing. I'm done crying about the numbers. Judges 7 comes to mind. Gideon faced with an impossible situation. Now I'm only saying that because here we are in the Missouri State Capitol where, 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 when, they, when they held the Ferguson, uh, the, the, the Ferguson March, there was over a thousand people in this very room for that. We can't even get the churches that are two minutes from here to show up. Oh. This man drove from Sykeston, Missouri, people. <laughs> I'm glad you all are here too, though. But you get my point. So it's not about the numbers, because here's Gideon, an impossible situation, and he could have cried about the numbers. He could have questioned God about it. And even though Gideon had some numbers, it's not how it was supposed to be. Did you notice this in the story? It wasn't about the numbers. I see a bunch of groups right now that are amassing numbers. Oh, we're building an army and we're singing about it and we're talking about it and we got the biggest church in town. Look at all these people. Yeah, what the heck are you doing? Anything? Anything? Because it's not about the numbers. It can be at times. There's times in the Bible where there were swarms of people that came in. There were times. But then there were times to call in the specialists the special forces, just a few that could get in there and do something undetected and get back out and the whole government would fall. You couldn't have put boots on the ground to get it done, but if I can just get me some men and some women that can just get in there, not everybody, but somebody. I need some more people and then we can do it. Well, I thought one could put a thousand and two could put ten. What happened to that? Oh, that takes faith to believe that, though. Just give me one other guy. There are battles that require numbers, but sometimes there's the special forces. See, when you got too many folks, it's drama. We don't have time for Christian drama anymore. There's no time for it. It's not a babysitting group anymore. You've been trained. You've heard the word of the Lord. Now do you believe it or not? That's where we're at. Now do you believe it or not? Well, but I don't understand it. I didn't ask if you understood it. I asked if you believed it. Come on. Do you believe it? My kids don't understand why they have to make their bed every day because they're going to sleep in it again that night. But when I tell them to do it, they, they have to do it. They don't need to understand it. I, it's not the bed that's the issue. This is a life lesson. It's a life lesson. You look at the devil today. I mean, here we are. You know the word of the Lord, so and you know what you believe. So stop listening to the enemy and everybody else. You already know. I can't stand it when people walk up to me and they say, well, so-and-so told me this, but the Bible says that. Why are we having this conversation? What? But, yeah, but you know, I heard, but then I, I can see, no, no. You know, the enemy is using the oldest trick in the book. Remember how, how the devil fooled Adam and Eve? What did he do? He didn't come in with a grand army. and, and He came in and he said, is that really what God said? They knew what God said because she said, yeah, he did. But, <laughs> no, that's how he fooled them. By coming in and, and getting them to question. Getting them to question it. You know what God has told you to do. There's nothing else to hear. You already know what he's told you to do. Come on. I need 300. 300 that will hold the shield. This is what Gideon had. Just 300. He experienced, Gideon experienced something right here that's pretty amazing. Gideon experienced something that would have the church leaders and religious leaders of today fasting and praying and crying and ashes and ripping their clothes. He experienced divine demotion, if you will. He, he had, he, he had uh, people that left, and it was a divine thing. He divinely lost numbers. We're saying, man, we need all these numbers. And the Lord came in and said, you got too many. You got too many now. You, there's too many of them here, Gideon. People have come into this room and have literally said to me, this is no lie. Where is everyone? I mean, if this was really from God, wouldn't there be... You know who I'm talking about. 
Mr. High and Mighty came in here one night and said, hey, uh, where is everybody? And that is exactly how he acted. Where is everybody? I mean, if this was really from the Lord, oh, I thought it was. I didn't know you were the Lord sent here to tell me. These same people said they wouldn't join us because there really just isn't anything going on here. And they're basing it off of numbers. That's a charismatic lie, by the way. You know, that's the old charismatic thing. Man, we got to build bigger buildings and build it and they will come. That is not a scripture. Build it and they will come. That's a charismatic lie. Judges 7, we see Gideon was set up and, and, and here's the enemy hosts were around him and God comes in and says this, the people that are with you are too many for me to give you, the Midianites, into their hands lest Israel vaunt themselves against me saying, my own hand has saved me. Look at our great army that did this. That's why there was only 120 in an upper room. Amen. There couldn't have been everybody else because they would have said, well, look what that group did. It was nothing to do with the group. They just needed to show up. And he's telling them, you got too many people. And all those people, what they're going to say is, is, your great army did this. Look at them all. Churches are so worried about the numbers. You got to have more so we can do this and that. No. It's good to have numbers, but no. So God tells him to dismiss some of them on that day. He said, if you're scared, go home. That's where we're at today, friends. Go home. If you're scared, go home. Gideon knows they're going to go into battle and he loses two-thirds of his army at the command of, of the Lord, by the way. Oh, look at Gideon over there. He must be in sin. He's losing everybody. Everybody's leaving old Gideon. He must be in sin. He was already way outnumbered then and now he's just let go. He's left with a third of his army. Just a third of his army. Then the Lord says to Gideon, you still got too many. I only have a third left. I was outnumbered to begin with. Still too many. Still too many. Still too many. God said, I'm going to weed out a few more of them. I'm going to weed out a few more of them. And it'll, it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomever I say unto thee, this shall not go with you, shall not go. 300. Out of 30,000... He's left for 300. And the Lord says, now we can do something. Now we can do something. Oh, man. He stripped it down to the special forces and gave them a plan that didn't even require weapons. Didn't require anything special. These weren't Bible school graduates. Sat under the ministry of Kenneth Hagin. He spit on me once. Well, he really did, but that doesn't matter. I was sitting on the front row. If you sit too close here, you'll get spit on. It wasn't the best of the best that know the whole Bible, can quote it in the Hebrew and the Greek. He took those that were warriors and gave them a plan. And when they dared to go forward, they had to hold that shield up high and say, we'll do it. We'll do it. If God said that we're going to do it this way, then we're going to do it. Definitely did not make sense. Did not make any sense. They had to believe God above any specialized military tactics that they had learned. Believe God against all conventional wisdom. Now listen, you got to be wise here, brother. you got to be wise. The wise thing is to do what God says to do. He will save with the many or the few. We have to do what He says to do. The enemy was so thick, it was described that their camels looked like grains of sand. You couldn't count them. They said there were so many men down there that it said it looked like grasshoppers swarming the land. And he's got 300 and does his best to surround them with 300. And look what happened. No weapons. They just made a whole bunch of noise and busted open some lanterns and shone the light. They just had shown the light into the darkness and the darkness could not comprehend the light and they killed each other. They scattered, they ran, they took off, fell over each other. They didn't know what to do. God saved by the few. He had to weed all those other ones out. It doesn't take everybody in here, but you're here. So what are we waiting for then? I don't have to have the chairs filled then. How about we just begin to hold up a shield and move forward in the plan that God has for us? 
How about we move forward? You're the ones that the Lord has brought out from the numbers, the specialist. Not everybody, but just somebody that will stand. There's some folks in here that will just stand. You're the ones. Listen, there's ministries with millions of dollars that should be doing this. But it's us. There's bigger churches in this town that should be doing this, but God's calling in the special forces for this one. I need these folks in here. I need this group in here. I've got to have somebody come. There's, uh, there's all these others that could be doing it. They could be doing it. They could fill this place with bodies, but it's not them, it's us. It's us. It's you. And we've got to stand. Stop looking around and waiting for the numbers to come flooding in before you jump on board. They're not coming. God never did use masses really anyway, did He? Nah, He never really was too big on that anyway. I'm not against Him, but if you've ever done your, your homework, there's no big miracles recorded in the Bible where they had great success with the thousands and millions upon millions jumping on board and saying, let's do this! It was never that way. 2 Kings 6, 15 and 17. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. Friends, this world is in a mess. The United States is in a mess. We are surrounded right now. The enemy is all around us. I love the, I love the story of uh, Colonel Chesty Puller, I think his name was. Is that how you say it? I love the story of this guy. He was very aggressive in, in moving forward. And, uh, and there's a lot of history about this guy. But it was recorded once that he came in one time. He was really good about studying the enemy and, and overtaking them. He, he was in our armed forces. And I love this man's story because there, it's recorded that he went into battle one day and the enemy started to surround him. They flanked him. He got caught. And they were totally surrounded. And he called in on the radio and he said, the enemy is in front of us. The enemy is behind us. They're to our right and they're, they're to our left. They won't escape us this time. It all depends on how you're going to look at it. We are totally surrounded, which means that anywhere that I point, I'm going to hit somebody. He got out of that that day with a great victory, by the way, because he meant exactly what he said. He moved forward with his shield of faith and said, there ain't no way. So I like this. They're totally surrounded. And then the servant said, alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not. The moment you fear, you've just sat it down. Come on. Fear not was the first thing he said. What are we going to do? Well, I don't know. We gotta... That's what we say. Well, I don't know. We better call everybody and we better get them to fasting and to pray. And he said, first thing you're not going to do is fear. Do not fear. Why would I not fear? Look around us. He was seeing something different, wasn't he? What are we going to do? He said, don't fear. For they that be with us are more than be with them. And he prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Friends, we've got a weapon that they can't see, they can't feel, and it's called faith. You may not see it. Just like this man. He couldn't see it. He couldn't feel it. What are we going to do? You're not going to fear. Lord, open his eyes and begin to see. Friends, all you got to do is open your eyes and you can already see it right here. It doesn't even take much faith to look at this. It's right here. Lord, what are we going to do? This. Don't fear and do this. This is our weapon. There is more of us in this room right now than there is in this whole city. If we could see up into this balcony... If we could see what was flying around up the top of this place, there is more with us than are with them. Come on, we got to believe it. You got to believe it. When you began to worship God in here just a little bit ago, His presence filled this place. I mean just from wall to wall, top to bottom, filled this place. What does that mean? It means it pushed everything else out. How are we going to take this state? We're doing it right here. Right. That's right. We're doing it right here because the greater one is here. Everywhere we go, there is more with me than there's ever going to be with anybody else that's out there because I have the greater one. The all in all is on the inside of you and I. And anywhere you go, this is why Kirk and I can say, you are a move of God going somewhere to happen. Yeah.
That sounds really cute, but you really are. So when it's battle time, you are that move of God going into that battle. You are the victorious one already walking onto the field knowing that you can win. Because when we begin to really look around, I can begin to see more with me than is with them. This is how we're going to do it, friends. You holding up that shield, trusting this word above anything else ever. I know what it looks like. The next time that something happens to you, I want you to literally do this if you have to. The next time a situation arises, say your finances are a mess. You throw that checkbook down and just do this. I think I'll just look at it through this and see what it says. I got some sickness or disease. What is that? Nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. Come on. Hold up that shield. Because if you don't, you're going to look at that. Ah, fiery dart. You're going to look at that checkbook. Oh, fiery dart. Going to start hitting you. Come on, let's look through the, the shield. Hold up the shield. Those guys could stand there and peek over that thing and say, yep, I see him coming. Not doing nothing to me. Boom, boom, boom. Nope. Boom, boom, boom. I'll outlast you. I'll just keep holding up my shield and moving forward. You see those guys with that riot gear? They use that thing, man. Boom. 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 The Spartans didn't use it to hide behind. It was a weapon. They'd take your head off with that thing. Let's use it. We've got a sword. Let's start swinging that thing. Let's start swinging that thing. Amen? Let's swing that thing. Glory to God. Listen, I'm ready to see my state turned upside down for the kingdom, and I don't need the, the legislature to do it. I don't need the Senate to do it. I just need me a couple people that are going to stand and believe with me. Amen? That we can actually change this place. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You need prayer? I want to pray with you. I want you to come up and we're going to pray with you right now. How many of you folks remember the story we told about uh, Lebanon, Missouri and the Down Syndrome child? Do you remember that? Yes. Well, the doctors are trying to say the same thing here. What do we say? Well, they said it's Down Syndrome. I don't think it is. I think that's a healthy baby right there. Amen. That's what I see. I just see a, a shield of faith. Amen. Now, she went in and got some good news. And then they flipped around and said, yeah, but there's some really bad news, too, attached to the end of that. You know, they just can't handle the good news, you know. But that's all right, because whether they believe it or not, we do. Isn't that right? We believe. We believe it. We know that we win. We know that this baby is being born for this time on this earth. This ain't, this ain't no mistake. This baby is being born for this time on earth. And absolutely not one thing will be wrong with this child. Perfectly normal. Yep, full development. You guys go ahead. Get your hands in there, mamas. Get them in there. Go ahead. 